Seeing none, we will move on to the next part of our agenda, which is the consider the re, uh, this is item number 37. Consider the report on the status of community te television's plan and timeline to address the change in funding and related action. Included with that is a letter of the Director of Information Services dated February 12th, 2012, and a report from community television. I see that our our uh, Director of Information Services, uh, Kevin Bowling, has, has assumed the position, so I assume we're going to hear from him first. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, just a couple of things before I turn it over to Community TV. Um, as you know, our local cable franchises have to end June 2014. Um, we will have to move to the state franchise agreement then for Charter and Comcast. It has a couple of big impacts to it. Um, one big impact is with community TV. One, what you can charge in PEG fees, which are for their public education and government um, stations that we have. We have to recalculate how we're collecting those fees, and I've done a rough cut and given them to community TV now. That will be a net, probably a net reduction of about 300,000 a year from what we're doing right now. The bigger issue is what you can spend the money on. There's some restrictions under um, federal restrictions on how the money can be spent that we have had the luxury to not have to deal with um, due to Sam Farr. So with that, uh, community TV has got a significant issue um, in terms of about 85% of their current revenue is really not going to be able to be used starting June or July 2014. And what we've asked them to do is work pretty hard trying to come up with solutions for that. And with that, I wanted to turn it over to Mary Ann Thiken um, from Community TV so that she can start to give you a feel for it because I believe when, the budget, when they submit a budget this year, they're going to have to start dealing with the loss of revenue. Otherwise, you know, 2014, that's a pretty significant cliff that you're going to hit. Uh, Kevin, so just a quick question. Yes. You said Sam Farr was the credit, but wasn't it John Laird? Oh, no. John Laird. Was it John Laird? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. He probably yeah, doesn't know what, what USB cord to use. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. So um, with that, I'll give it to Mary Ann. You know Hi, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, I'm Mary Ann Thiken, and I'm the executive director at Community okay. TV. Also today from Community uh -huh. TV, we have our chair, Karen Machado, and our vice chair, Keith Goodger, here uh, representing I've given you uh, packets of material that you ha have seen that talk about the sea changes that are necessitated by DIVCA, but also by the technology changes in our industry. They're simply changes that have to be made. So on May 8th, we'll be returning with a work plan and a budget that will speak to the future of CTV. But now what I wanted to do is give you an opportunity to, to have a, a snapshot of where we are and where we're going. CTV operates three channels. One is a public access channel, one is educational, and one is government focused. We operate 24-7 every day of the year. Uh, staff members of CTV and citizen producers create programming for the station. This year we have covered events as varied as what's next for Santa Cruz lectures to the Christmas parade. Staff created almost 350 programs while the public created over a thousand programs for distribution by our channels. This makes us one of the most active stations in the country in terms of the amount of programming that comes in. Another uh, major mission for CTV is training. We train our members to use our tools effectively. We train local nonprofits to tell their stories and increase their value in the community. And we also go into schools and we train students on media literacy and 21st century job skills. In our preparation for DIVCA, we've really been at work for a couple of years in terms of thinking about what these changes are going to bring about. We have been looking for ways to expand our business model to bring in money. Two years ago, we had never had a fundraiser, nor did we even think of ourselves as an organization that would need to fundraise. But uh, we, that has all changed. 
we have had two successful fundraisers, and that's a part of our activity, as is membership growth. We have actively pursued grant money that would serve our mission, like our current South County Youth Training Program, which is a $65,000 project now going on in Watsonville Middle and High Schools. We have revamped our four higher production service and bidding on and getting production work that will make us money. We have changed our standards and have been able to go out and compete with other production groups in Santa Cruz. We have updated our tools uh, and our potential with the, with the launch of our HD production truck. The truck has allowed us to cover things in ways that we really didn't have the potential to do before, and it also has allowed us to get grants in terms of training who are using the production truck. We've developed partnerships with groups like the Community Foundation, which clearly I don't know how to uh, use their initials properly, but with the Community Foundation to engage in four fee training programs and working with them. And we have moved the board from a governance board to one that works actively in fundraising and strategy. So, what are we doing currently? Well, we've made progress but clearly have a way to go. As the materials that you got show, we're hard at work at trying to t find solutions to take us into the future. We have begun with an analysis of every program and project. We have revamped our financials to allow us to understand the costs of everything that we are doing and the amount of money that we're bringing in. And though, that's some of the information that I'll be presenting to you in May. Led by Board uh, Vice Chair Keith Goodger, we have committees covering technology, fundraising, training, programming, and marketing. And they are meeting weekly as we assemble our plan for 2012-2013. We're analyzing our space needs. We're garnering information from community members. We're working with other PEG stations to learn from their plans and to seek possible partnerships. We're talked to CMAP about potential shared services and other kinds of things that we can do to, sh to uh, stretch our dollars. And finally, we're enlarging our intern and volunteer programs to prepare us to serve the community for less while providing valuable job skills in the process. Challenges and opportunities. Well, there are some incredible challenges and some amazing opportunities that are really in front of us. As you've heard, Div's difficult challenge is that funding is restricted to capital expenditures. And that necessarily means for us a paradigm shift. But it doesn't mean the end of community television. We have the potential to grow and change the way the technology is changing as we continue to deepen our web and our smartphone accessibility. We have the potential to look for new groundbreaking projects to bring in grant money from foundations who understand that hyper-local government access is the wave of the future and not the past. We have the potential to enlarge our pool of citizen producers by making it easier for them to upload and access content. And we have the potential to heighten our relevance through more different models of programming and citizen contribution. Our future may be one where our capital expenditure allows us to have incredible cutting, end equi cutting edge equipment that entices the best interns and volunteers in the county. It, we are not sure what it's going to look like. We know it's going to work, look differently and work differently. But we do know that we are going to work hard to maintain our focus to give community, our community voice, to share our deepest concerns, and to focus on our most important goals. I welcome your questions about any of the information and any input you may have as we are putting together our plan for the coming year. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions from the board? I don't have a, a question, but I just um, want to applaud your positive <laughs> attitude. <laughs> it's, it's, it's probably not easy, but it um, seems sincere, and I, 
I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I feel that uh, it's an incredible resource and there is a way to make <laughs> it continue to be incredible. You're going to make to lemonade, right? <laughs> yeah, it's got... Uh, Supervisor Coonerty. Um, thank you for the report. I think, uh, you know, community TV is an important part of our, our uh, the whole county and it's, uh, and it, because it's important, I think that's part of the anxiety of exactly. this sort of drastic change over this coming down the road and our anxiety that in fact that you and your board and your members are able to to uh, really make that transition and, and keep it around so that we can have that. Uh, yeah. Some of the, the, when I look at your report, some of the uh, things that I saw is you identified that a third of your expenditures is going to train and support community producers. Correct. Meanwhile, member dues bring in only about $6,700 a year. And uh, I know that the way that the governance is set up is that seven of the 11 members of your board are really chosen by those 300 or so members, uh, of which my understanding is only about 10 or 15 percent of them actually vote in elections. So I, I, it, it creates a situation where your board becomes very heavy on the production side. Productions are wonderful. You obviously are doing a lot of great productions, all that sort of thing. But there may be different skills that are needed to do this transition from uh, being funded in a way that uh, is going to be significantly different than what it is in the future. When you come back on May uh, 8th, I'd like you to have some discussion about governance issues. Absolutely. About how you uh, address that because um, I understand that the board has worked well at a time when there was the money in order to do those productions. There may need other skills on that board and other ways to bring about that. I think that um, you have to start creating reserves for this time when this transition goes on. And I know, uh, you know, their budget has been pretty much break even or even uh, overextended a little bit. So I think that you're obviously have a sense of the direction you need to go. I think uh, you, hopefully. Uh, the way you present it, that you're ready to move that way and your board is ready to move that way. Um, but I just want to make sure there's nothing that sort of gets in the way of, uh, of doing that because you're, you're very important to the community. We want to see you continue to go on as strong as you can. So. Thank you. Yes, that, was, that is another area that we'll be looking at. We will be looking at governance and uh, uh, all in how the, uh, uh, the board of directors is appointed and uh, selected. So those, we will be coming back to you with that information. Okay, thank you. Yep. Supervisor Stone. I guess I, all I can do is reiterate those comments, Marianne. Thank you for coming, Karen, for coming and, and presenting to us. It's, I think it's important to keep this connection up. I'm glad you're coming yes. back on the 8th. But in the eight plus years I've been on here, we haven't had too much information from community TV. I think keeping us surprised and, and having the venue to be able to talk about where you're going and, and the exciting things that are coming down. This is a great place to be able to do that, and you have a very interested audience here because we do all understand the impact and the importance that community TV is to our community, and to be able to get information out to our community about so many things that are important. So thank you for coming, and thank you. Look forward to watching and being a part of the evolving process. I, I'm really looking forward to having you all be a part of the process as well. It's extremely important to us as we uh, as we go forward. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I just had a couple of questions. Uh, uh, the reason I asked uh, Kevin at the at the beginning to clarify about uh, John Laird because uh, I recognize that John, when he was our assembly member, it created a little cutout for uh, Santa Cruz that was really critical, and we've seen that a lot this year about the value. Uh, of that work that he did. Uh, over 500 uh, homes will be able to access cable uh, TV, They'll therefore be able to see your, uh, the, the community TV. Um, and that's really important uh, in the rural areas uh, and, and along with internet access. Um, because we got this two year carve out, yeah. um, we, are, uh, we are ahead of our neighboring communities and the fact that we get to have two more years of operation uh, dollars than they do, um, and we're behind because they obviously have to prepare for these changes now, and uh, and and don't have the luxury 
of uh, having two more years. And it would be helpful when you return in May to, to be able to give us uh, some reflection about what's happening around the entire Bay Area, about how, how people and what the models they're using, uh, because that should be instructive to us. We should be able to learn from the best practices of our neighboring communities, or any community actually in California, because it's a statewide law, um, and be able to pull the, the best to maintain the vibrancy uh, of community TV. Um, uh, there's been suggested that, uh, that there be uh, some money put aside for a reserve to continue to have operation uh, expenses. Have your board talked about what that percentage might be? Well, we are going to be cutting 15% uh, out of our budget in the coming year like the other uh, county departments. And that money will be in reserve and then we are hoping uh, to add to that uh, to save more money than that in terms of, of trying to build up that reserve for next year. So we're trying to figure out a way to, to add to that. And when you come back to us in May, will you have a, a revised staffing plan that looks out more than just to the 2012-2013 year, but the 2013-14 and beyond? Yes. What we're what we're trying what we're putting together right now is a business plan and to put in front of you to take a look at what how we think we can best succeed as we go forward, and that will mean changes necessarily that we have to do next year to prepare us for 2013-14, and then we will will bring changes in over that period of time. So what we're looking to do as we come into the year is be is have. Uh, it, our decisions are going to be based on 2014. They're not going to be based on just getting us through next year. Well, I think that'd be really helpful because yep. I think that this law was passed in 2006, and so uh, I appreciate the positive attitude and the and and uh, the commitment to bringing back to something that's in the last couple of, uh, in the next couple of months. And there, there's been uh, this law was passed in 2006, so it, it, should, it should come as no surprise no. as. as Operating. I know, Marianne, you haven't been there all that long. Um, and so it's a responsibility of everybody involved to make sure that we have adequate plans. But the speed at which this transformation has to take place will accelerate with every passing month. Yes. And so the, the responsibilities that I hear you're going to be meeting on a weekly basis with these uh, subcommittees, and I think that that's going to be critical because the, the, the community TV is a critical resource for our community. Uh, um, you know, as someone uh, who's lived here for over 25 years and is a meeting person, and I've gone to city council meetings, board meetings, community meetings, the luxury of being able to watch some of these meetings at home and not have to go down it is a great one, and it, it improves our democracy that we get to see people um, in action rather than just having to depend on a newspaper report or a radio reporter or TV, that people can actually see the interplay be, uh, between elected officials, can, uh, can hear the discussions. And I think that that's, that's an important um, value in a democracy. And I think that the, 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 the varied program that goes on there, whether it be history projects or cultural uh, programs or news programs or sports programs, but they become part of the community fabric. Uh, so <coughs> I believe in community TV. But I think the past history will not be the best guide to what the future um, will look like. And that transformation w will be extraordinary and will have to happen very fast because the planning hasn't gone on before this. And so um, that will ne necessitate uh, many changes, some of which may be appreciated by your membership and the community, and some may not. Right. But we're talking about survival. And you're not talking about just survival of your individual job or the members of the board, uh, but you're talking about the survival of this resource for the community. And so that the, the, um, the all local jurisdictions have entrusted in you this resource, and we want it to continue to go on, but we need to see this, this rapid transformation. So I'm, uh, I'll be looking forward to the, to the May report, and I think we will all be looking critically about uh, uh, about what's uh, contained therein and, and the budget information and what the vision of the board is for that transformation uh, because uh, it, it's it's too important to let fail. So. Thank you. One more quick thing. Um, 
Supervisor Leopold is an expert at fundraising because uh, that was his job before he took on this job. And I know that uh, when you create that budget, we can take a look at it in May, there's opportunities for grant writing, there's opportunities for fundraising, there's opportunity for membership dues. But all those things, I think we're going to be taking a hard look at because Supervisor Leopold knows in order to accomplish those things, it can't just be a number on a page. You really have to set up a structure in order to make exactly. those things happen. And we'll want to look and see how the board and how your organization really approaches all those different categories to make sure that those numbers are real numbers and attainable. Um, so it's, it's hard, but uh, you're an important institution, so we uh, want to work with you to make all that happen. Thank you. It's really appreciated. Are there members of the public who would like to uh, say anything? No member of the public? Uh, no action required on our part, as far as I can tell. So, uh, well, thank the you. The recommendation in the letter is to direct them to come back on the 8th. Oh, so that's right. I will take Have that as a, I will take that as a motion, motion Supervisor Stone. I know yes. you're coming back anyway. Yeah, Supervisor Stone made the motion. Second. Seconded by Supervisor Coonerty. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We'll look forward to seeing you back here sometime soon. Uh, and we'll move on to our next item, uh, which is item 38, which is consider approving in concept a proposal. 37.1? 37.1. 